Hello friends, this video on probability part 16 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 15. A die is tossed thrice, find the probability of getting odd number at, at least once. This guy is thrown once, twice and thrice. So the same dice twice. We have to find the probability of odd number at least once. That is odd number 0 times, uh, 1 times, 2 times, 3 times. This is nothing but 1 minus probability of getting even number at all throw. Correct? See, probability of getting odd number at least once is nothing but 1 minus probability of getting even number at all throw. Understand this, when you say odd number at least once, this satisfies, this is odd even even right uh, odd when you get odd ones odd ones odd ones is these three odd twice right odd twice is this guy one option you can have e in the center or e in the beginning or odd all times this is what i am looking for right and if you see this guy is excluding only one scenario that is all even if you add all that becomes a whole sample space right so instead of right calculating all these values which is difficult to calculate and that's the reason why i took this because i have to find all these values right all these combinations all these options instead of doing this i can easily find probability of getting all evens and i know that one minus probability of getting all evens is nothing but this probability of this set and that's why I'll use this. Please note why I'm using it. This is I could have done this way also. It'll be the same answer, but the question will be lengthy because when you say odd number at least once, you have these many scenarios, seven scenarios, right? And this is also equal to one minus probability of getting even at number at all throws. And this guy is only one scenario. So calculating one scenario is much easier than calculating seven scenarios. So we are doing this way. So this becomes one minus probability of getting even number in all throw that means probability of getting even number in first throw second throw and third throw correct this becomes 1 minus p of e1 into p of e2 given even into p of e3 given even e2 right that's how it is by uh, this multiplication theorem we have now if you know that Probability of even is what? Probability of getting a, a even number here is 1 by 2. Why 1 by 2? Because the even numbers are 2, 4, 6. Odd number is 1, 3, 5. Right? So probability of this guy is 3 by 6. That is 1 by 2. And probability of getting odd number is also 3 by 6. That is 1 by 2. Correct? Why 3 by 6? Because it has 6 outputs. And 3, 3 elements in the sample. So 1 by 2. Now if you see all are independent actually. Right? Probability of even e2 e3 are all independent logically also we can see that you throw a die probability of getting even the second die is independent of what you have got in the first die probability of getting even or odd in the third die is all independent of the probability of getting even or odd in the first die so probability of e2 will uh, e2 e2 even even will also be 1 by 2 and probability of e3 even even e2 will also be 1 by 2 Correct because they are independence, right? So this becomes 1 minus 1 by 8, that is 7 by 8, and that is my answer. The question says 10 balls are drawn random with displacement from a box containing 10 greens and 8 balls. Find the probability that both are red. First ball is green, second is red. And one of them is green, other is red. So let's take this box which has 10 greens and 8 red balls. Now we have to find the probability that both are red. And please note it is with replacement. Since it is with replacement, they are independent events. As we explained in some examples where you take out a ball, you replace it back, then again you take out the ball, then these are independent events. But if you take out a ball, you don't replace, you again take out the second ball, then it will be dependent events. Right, this thing we've explained in one of the examples. 
if you don't understand this, watch the previous videos. You'll, you'll find an example where we explain this. So both are red. That is, I'm looking for probability of first ball red, second ball red. Right? This is nothing but probability of first ball red into probability of second ball red given first ball red with the multiplication theorem. And this is nothing but probability of third one into probability of red 2. Why? Because they are independent events. Probability of red 2 given red 1 is nothing but probability of red 2. So what is probability of red 1? Probability of getting red is 8 by 18 because they are 8 red, 10 green, 18 total. Similarly, probability of getting again red is 8 by 18, right? And that is nothing but 16 by 18. And that is my answer for the first part. The second says probability of first green and second red, right? This guy is nothing but probability of first green, probability of second red given first is green but since they are independent it will be nothing but probability of red first sorry yeah first green g1 into probability of red 2 because probability of red 2 given g1 is nothing but probability of red 2 so probability of green is nothing but 10 by 18 because there are 10 greens 18 total balls probability of red is 8 by 18 right because 8 red 18 total balls and that is nothing but if you see 20 by 18 Similarly, third is one of them is green, other is red. So one is green, other is red. It can be first red, second green or first green, second red, right? So we have to take both condition, correct? So that means I'm looking for probability of red one, green two plus probability of green one, red two, correct? This becomes nothing but probability of red 1 into probability of green 2 plus probability of green 1 into probability of red 2. I am directly doing this time because I knew that you are aware that probability of G2 given R1 is nothing but probability of G2. So directly I wrote G2 here. Here also probability of R2 given G1 is R2. So I directly wrote this. So probability of red is what? 8 by 18. Green is what? 10 by 18, they are 10 greens. Plus, probability of green is was 10 by 18. Probability of red is what? 8 by 18. So, if you solve this, what you get is 40 by 18. And that is my answer. Please note, since this was with replacement, they were independent event. We can we could solve it very easily. Had this been without replacement, then it was not an independent event. And we would have to apply a lot of logic to solve this question. Probability of solving a specific problem independently by A and B are 1 by 2, 1 by 3 respectively. If both try to solve the problem independently, find the probability that the question is solved and exactly one of them solves the problem. So we have two people and probability that the question is, this guy is A and this person is B. Probability to solve by A is 1 by 2 and probability to solve by B is 1 by 3. Correct. Find the probability that the problem is solved. That means problem is solved either by A or B. Doesn't matter. That means I am looking for probability of A union B. Right? This means the problem is solved by either A or B. I don't know. Right? Because the problem can be solved by A, not by B. Problem can be solved by B not by A or problem can be solved both by A and B. So we are looking for all these scenarios, right? So this is nothing but A union B. That means the problem is solved, right? This is nothing but probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A and B. Since they are independent events, so this is nothing but probability of A and B is nothing but probability of A into probability of B. So what is, now let's put the value, probability of A is 1 by 2, probability of B is 1 by 3, minus probability of A is 1 by 2 into 1 by 3. So if you solve this, you get 2 by 3. So the probability that the question is solved is 2 by 3. The text question says that the problem is solved exactly by one of them. That means I am looking either for probability of A but not B 
or I'm looking for probability of not A but B. That is either if this person solves, B is not solving. If this lady doesn't solve, B is solving. I'm looking for this kind of scenarios. This guy is nothing bad. Probability of A into probability of not B plus probability of not A into probability of B. Since probability of A is 1 by 2, probability of not A is 1 minus 1 by 2. Right? That is 1 by 2 itself. Probability of B is 1 by 3. Probability of not B will be 1 minus 1 by 3. That is 2 by 3. So this is equal to probability of A is 1 by 2. Probability of B dash is 2 by 3. Probability of A dash is 1 by 2. Into probability of B here is 1 by 3. So if you solve this, you get 1 by 2. Let's take one more example. In a hostel, 60% of the student reads Hindi newspaper and 40% of them reads English newspaper. 20% read both English and Hindi. And a student is selected at random. One student is selected. Find the probability that she reads neither Hindi nor English newspaper. If she reads Hindi newspaper, find the probability that she reads English newspaper. So what I'm supposed to find? Here I'm told that 60% is Hindi, 40% is English, right? 20% is Hindi and English. Let me draw a Venn diagram for this to make this be clear. This guy is Hindi, this guy is English. Hindi and English is 20%, so this guy is 20, let's suppose. Let's suppose there are 100 students, I'll assume there are 100 students. 20 is high. H intersection E. 60 is Hindi, so 60, uh, 40 plus 20 is 60, so this guy is 40. 20 is English, so 20 plus 20 is 40, so this is my 20, 20, and this guy will be 20, outside. Correct. So, now I can see that there are 20 students who doesn't read Hindi or English. So I am looking for here is probability of people who don't read Hindi, don't read English also. That is Hindi and English complement. Correct. So if you see Hindi and English, Hindi and English complement is nothing but 20%. So this is 20%. And yeah, that is 1 by 5. Just by the Venn diagram I could tell this. The second was if C reads Hindi, the condition is if he reads Hindi, find the probability that uh, C reads English newspaper. So that is how to find the probability of English given Hindi. So here we are not even sure they are independent events or not. Looking by the example, it looks like this is not independent event. So let's do one thing. This is nothing but probability of E and H by probability of H. What is E and H? E and H is 20%. 20 by 100 by probability of H is 60%. 60 by 100. So if you solve it, you get 1 by 3. So that is my answer. That is the probability that a person reads, uh, if she reads Hindi, the probability that she reads English is also 1 by 3. With the Venn diagram, it was a little clear and we could easily solve this question. Correct. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.